Welcome back, everybody. You're watching uh, the Handyman Business YouTube channel. It's a, it's a tough time of year for us small business owners, guys who are self-employed. It's tax time. I have to go to my accountant tomorrow. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. And I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I still have to get all my investment numbers ready for him. Plug into whatever he does. All the magic that they do. Today's video, as you can tell by the title, which I haven't quite come up with yet, uh, it's about taxes and tax deductions and the importance of, of taking advantage of uh, corporate tax deductions. Unless you're very new, you know that I am an S corporation. Prior to that, I was an LLC. And prior to that, I was just a, a guy with some tools and a pickup truck. I've learned some lessons along the way and I wanted to share those experiences with you. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just gonna share what I've learned. The number one thing I've learned once I got to a certain uh, level of income, profitability, is get a good tax accountant. All the blood and that sweat for the last 13 years, it's all added up to a business where I have a lot to lose. I am uh, partnering with Epson. This is their rapid receipt scanner. And the reason I agreed to do it is because it is very valuable to have the proper documentation for tax deductions. I've got a whole long list of different tax deductions. I've got a whole pile, a mountain of receipts. These are all hard copies from years ago. I also have got hard drives. This is all where the new tax receipts go. So first I wanna just quick show you how this Epson rapid receipt scanner works. The setup was pretty easy. It went a lot smoother than I thought. I didn't have to really even type anything in. I just had to download and click next, next, next. And somehow it figured it all out and it said you're ready to go. Just hit computer, okay, and I have a one-sided receipt from the Econo Lodge in Decatur, Texas. So this would be a travel receipt. You, how do we do this here? Just go just like this, pop it in, and you can see it's it's been bouncing around the truck. Let's see, how do we do it? Oh, we hit, uh, hit scan. Boom, there it is. Now it's on my computer in a PDF format. I hit the next button. I'm not gonna show you it because it's got all my personal intel. And then I just hit save. That brings me to a standard screen, like if you were gonna save a picture. What folder do you wanna save it in? Just hit save and that's it. I just reduced my taxable income by $74.58. A lot more to go. <laughs> They also have this little battery operated mobile scanner. I'll be keeping this in my truck from now on so that I have the proper documentation, 100% if I get audited. As I've been preparing for this video, I've kind of been thinking, what's the mindset of an IRS, what do they call them, agents? They're auditors. Are they agents? I don't know. The handyman, oh, we gotta go audit the handyman. Mr. Handyman, IRS agents here. We need to audit you. We need your documentation. And if you are prepared with very easy to, to read, very easy to understand electronic documentation, they do not want, they do not want Walmart bags full of receipts. Uh, that's why I do believe that this is valuable and I'm going to be using it. So thank you Epson for sending this out. You have taxable income and a lot of people like to brag about it. I made so much money. I make this much money. I make that much money. A couple of them have went viral on my main YouTube channel. When you get to a certain level in business, you start wanting, you start wanting to... Say, I didn't make any money. <laughs> I don't make any money. I don't take a picture. I've been paid in five years. I remember uh, working for this, uh, this guy. He has a software company. And he had one, two, three, four, he had about five rental houses. And uh, I kind of was picking his brain, picking his brain about business and tax deductions. And how much do you make? Or how do you, what type of business are you? Anyways, he says, uh, I don't make any money. Like, what do you mean you don't make any money? You got five houses, you got a brand new truck. That's not my truck, that's my wife's truck. It's your wife's truck? Yeah, it's my wife's truck. I go, well then whose car is that? <laughs> oh, that's my wife's car. <laughs> 
I'm like, why don't you have anything? There's a lot of gray area, and it's like a secret society of the business world and tax accountants on how to navigate the tax code and how to categorize all your deductions and how to have it set up. Claiming legitimate tax deductions is an important income tax strategy for small businesses. I'm just gonna go through some of the main categories. Like I said, when you get to a certain point, don't rely on your interpretation. Hire a professional. This video and these discussion points should get the ball rolling, should get the wheels turning, hopefully, to either you doing enough research to do it on your own, which I don't suggest, unless you're just starting out and you're making, oh, 50, 60,000. If you are getting above 60,000 and you can see the future, 80,000 is next, 100,000 and, and beyond, that tax accountant is going to have to be a part of of your business. Okay, I think I, I think I stressed that enough. So we're just gonna go through the top ones that we as home service people will use as deductions. First one is mileage, driving mileage on your vehicle. So we, we, we drive a lot. We could drive 20,000 plus miles a year. Hey Google, what's 20,000 times 57 and a half cents? The answer is 1.15 million US cents. <laughs> 1.5 million. Hey Google, can you convert 1.15 million cents to dollars? You're useless. Our number is 11 grand, 11 and a half thousand dollars. So right there, we just reduced our taxable income by 11 and a half thousand dollars. Our goal is to bring that big number down as much as possible. You can't just come to the end of the year, check your odometer and submit a, a number. Of course, that's what most everybody does in hopes that they don't get audited. And if they do get audited, they're frantically creating a ledger of to where they drove. That's part of documenting your mileage is you have to have a, a location of where you were going, what you were doing for profit to drive those miles. Another one is supplies. Supplies, there we go. Here's an example of some supplies. Sandpaper coming out of my ears. I get sandpaper all the time. So sandpaper could be some supplies. It's not an asset that I gotta depreciate. The next big one, which I find the most complicated, and that's why I have a, uh, a tax professional figure this out, is depreciation. So when I buy something of value, uh, let's just take this table saw, this eh, $3,000 table saw. I just can't just deduct it. What do you mean deduct? Deduct it where? It has to be put into a category. So something of $3,000 value would have to be depreciated over time. What about something like this? My Incra miter saw gauge fence, quick reference angle chart deal here. This is not cheap but it's not a $3,000 table saw. Do I have to depreciate this? These are a lot of important things to think about. Now, depreciating my truck. I got a big deduction in, what year did I buy that? It was 2019, yes. 2019, I purchased a new to me truck. It wasn't brand new, but it was pretty close to, to new. What we did is we depreciated half of that purchase price for my 2019 taxes. So last, was it last year? We took half of it and depreciated it. So that was a big chunk of change and reducing my taxable income for 2019. Keep in mind, we've got 11,500. We've got another 30 grand that's half the truck. Uh, so now we've already brought our taxable income down uh, $40,000 and we're just getting started. The second half of that truck value is depreciated over time. All right, the next one up, on the list is utilities, your cell phone, your internet, even electricity. One thing that I did for heating this workshop is I chose propane. Propane is very easy to distinguish against the natural gas and the electricity bill of my, of my house. So I have a propane bill and I have a receipt for it. I'll probably end up going through 200 pounds a year of propane. It's very easy to categorize that and show that as a business expense. Travel, this is one that I've done quite a bit of research on because I like to travel. And some of my work requires that I travel. Uh, I've got more than just a handyman business. And the Econo Lodge, where did the Econo Lodge go? This here is an example of a travel expense. What I need to do is write down on this receipt what I was doing. It has the date that I had the expense. It has who I paid, but it doesn't have why. You have to have the why part of it as well for your tax auditor or agent. 
So how do we deduct a Hawaiian vacation? There's a percentage, and I used to know how many, what percentage of the travel had to be for business. In order to take a seven day trip to Hawaii, you have to have a certain percentage of that time dedicated to, to work or business. You can get creative with that. I know a lot of people will, will try to find seminars or something along those lines to say that, oh, I went there for business. But you can't go to a three-hour seminar on a seven-day Hawaiian vacation. What you could do is go there looking for real estate and go to an open house on five of the seven days. Go to the open house, get the flyer, and go back to the beach. Now, is that stretching it? If you don't have anything uh, in your business that shows that you are a real estate investor, then it's probably not gonna fly. But if you already have three, four rental houses, maybe only one rental house, I think it would pass. But would the, the agent, the IRS guy, would it pass with him? I'm not sure. That's why you should ask your tax account. There's other requirements for having travel as a tax deduction. Uh, it has to be away from where you do business, like on a day-to-day -day business. So if you live in Dallas, Texas, uh, you can't go to Fort Worth uh, on a business trip, but you could go to, say, Houston on a business trip. Now, this is another one that I like. Advertising. Advertising is a huge portion of most corporations, most businesses' budget. You can fully deduct all your advertising expenses. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a business card, uh, ads on Facebook, or a monster truck. <laughs> yes, you can go out and buy a monster truck and have the handyman plastered across the side of it as your advertising. You could have a link to your website, you can have a link to your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, Snapchat, your OnlyFans. Probably have to cut that one out. Another one uh, is home office. Um, this here isn't my office, this is my, we'll call this, we can call this whatever you want, call this my laboratory, my workshop, my film studio, but anything that goes in here is a deduction. Anything that goes into my home office is a, is a deduction. Along with your home office, you have office expenses. Whether it's magazine subscriptions, you know, you go to an office and they've got magazines out there, or you have a fish tank, or you have lots of taxidermy. A lot of offices have taxidermy. It's my story, I'm sticking to it. This one's pretty straightforward, rental equipment. You go to the Home Depot, refinish hardwood floors. I go and rent the big drum sanders and the big buffers. Those are tax deductions. Another one, it's a miscellaneous category. Maybe this fits into my miscellaneous category. If you've got deductions, you got business expenses that don't neatly fit into other categories, they can fall into the miscellaneous category. The IRS has all these definitions and these, these, these words, ordinary and necessary. Is it ordinary for your business to need this thing? And is it necessary for your business to need this thing. I actually kind of feel better talking about this because I have high anxiety levels going in tomorrow and I still have a lot of work to do gathering numbers to reduce my taxable income. I've got thousands and thousands of Lowe's and Home Depot receipts. And will this Epson rapid receipt, okay, goes in like, uh, goes in upside down. Will this thing Take a flimsy, wrinkled up Lowe's receipt and scan it. How did it come out? Perfect. It takes a perfect scan. Of course, I'm not gonna show you all my, de my personal details. You're gonna have to take my word for it that there's a perfect PDF copy of this old wrinkled up Receipt from, what's the date on this one? 2014, uh, the total amount, and what, what it's for. Ah. Self-discipline is what it takes, or else you're gonna end up in jail or something like that, or you're gonna end up having to pay the IRS all the money in your, your kid's college savings account. If you got any questions, put them down below. And more importantly, if you have advice or personal experience. Yeah, let's go, let's go with personal experience. Not something that you read, not something that you heard on another YouTube channel. Personal experience, put it down below in business tax deductions, business expenses that are legitimate. Because we don't want to go too far over the line. There's no doubt that there's a big gray area 
and you want to stay uh, in the safe, safer region, even if it costs you a little bit of extra money. That's all. Goodbye.